The Little Hippo by Andre Klaus and Geraldine Elschner, published by Prestel. This story begins in ancient Egypt, during the happy age of blue hippos. At that time, if you gazed at the watery marshes that lined the cities, you could see the hippos' backs curled up along the horizon. As the good masters of the River Nile, the blue hippos basked in its tranquil waters. All around them bloomed flowers, and as time went by, the river's many plants left a mark on their sun-bathed skin. Fish would brush up against them, butterflies would land on them, and birds pecked without fear at these strange turquoise creatures. One day, the youngest amongst them, the one they called Little Hippo, became the friend of Antef, a tall old man with white hair. Every night, side by side, Antef and Little Hippo would admire the setting sun. The sun dies each day to be reborn each morning, the old man would say. Soon I too will fall asleep just like him. Then a long journey will begin. When Antef left for this unknown kingdom, and when he was laid below the ground, Little Hippo lay down beside him and fell into a deep slumber. Time went by, days, months, centuries. Hidden deep inside their tomb, Antef and Little Hippo seemed to be forgotten. Then, one bright morning at the first light of dawn, shovels began to dig through the earth. Hands began to search slowly through everything. One by one, the diggers removed a multitude of objects, each one more precious than the other. All this commotion woke up Little Hippo, who became frightened and hid beneath a stone. It was only then that he noticed his size. Instead of growing all these years, he had been getting smaller and smaller. As soon as he got a chance, Little Hippo slipped out into the open. Nothing looked the same outside. The city had vanished into thin air, and in the river, the blue hippos had disappeared. Where were his brothers, his friends, his parents? There was not even a single flower growing anywhere, not a single bird flying in the sky. Wind and time had taken them all. I need to find my own kind, thought Little Hippo. Perhaps they've left for distant lands, the one which Antef so often mentioned. And so he began his journey, a minuscule blue spot in the big golden desert. He scampered for days. The more he walked, the more sand stuck to his skin covering the beautiful turquoise color of his back. Soon, he began to shine as brightly as the sun. Little by little, underneath his feet, clay began to replace the warm sand of the desert. Houses lined the road here and there. And when the wind blew clay dust onto his body, Little Hippo took the appearance of a setting sun. In the distance, a forest appeared. Little Hippo was so happy to see the trees and plants again. He rolled around in the leaves and ate them with delight. When he came out, he was as green as a prairie. Little Hippo kept walking and walking for what seemed like an eternity. At last, he saw tall silhouettes on the horizon. A thick fog floated in the air heavy with dust and smoke. Exhausted, Little Hippo lay down and fell asleep. When he woke up, he looked just like a gray mouse. Little Hippo sighed. <sighs> he had been traveling for so long, he would never find his lost ancestors. When he caught sight of water flowing gently in a meandering river, he slipped into it and began to cry. But all of a sudden, as the current washed over his small round back, he saw 
called them. His parents, his brothers, his friends. They were all waiting for him in a pyramid made of glass. Filled with joy, Little Hippo ran up to join them with all the strength that his little legs would allow. Ever since that day, Little Hippo has slept blissfully beside his family and friends. Meanwhile, around the earth, all hippos bathe tirelessly in the hope that one day they'll recover the beautiful turquoise color they once had. A hippopotamus found in a tomb in Egypt at Dra Abul El Naga. Egyptian earthenware made during the 11th dynasty, circa 2040 to 1640 BC. Height, 5 inches, 12.7 centimeters, in the Musée de Louvre, Paris, France.